uh, me letting go of all the material things, um, downscaling from a big house to a smaller one, from three cars to one, because the mentality of a footballer is you need to have a car for the weekend and for training, <laughs> and the family car, which makes no sense at all. <laughs> My name is Opa Maisela for Sports Fanatics. And we have an opportunity today in that there's the FA version, you know, South Africa's FA version of the competition called the NetBank Cup. So we go in there. It's always intriguing how football players spend their money and the big concern that most go broke after retirement. I'm here at the 2023 NetBank Cup final press conference to hear how NetBank Cup ambassador Teko Murise handled his finances while he was at the peak of his playing day. Teko, I think everybody here who's a member of the media knows that um, all your trials and tribulations were well publicized, magnified, those small decisions that you made, well publicized in the media, financial downfalls and so forth. And you've written about it in your book. What are the small decisions you feel that you've made to be where you are today financially? Uh, I think for me it was, um, at the time, it, it felt like it's a small decision, but in hindsight it was a big one. Um, me letting go of all the material things, um, downscaling from a big house to a smaller one, from three cars to one. And, and at that time also, um, I think I wanted change, but I didn't know where to start. My game was, 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 was perfect on the pitch, but my lifestyle, in per, as a person, I was mm. more depressed, the more I was the most unhappiest, and, and I thought that all these material things would actually fill the void of being unhappy. And downscaling those actually helped me to find myself and helped me mm. to actually like myself and love myself because I always try to please everybody else but myself. And at the time, letting go of all those material things, um, uh, it was a, it was a small decision at the time because I knew that I could afford so many things. But in hindsight, it became big because of that's how I left my mm. life. I lived my life after that, uh, getting rid of three cars, having one. Because the mentality of a footballer is you need to have a car for the weekend and for training, <laughs> and the family car, which makes no sense at all. And uh, because uh, because I saw other footballers that I admire doing it, yeah. I thought it's the right way to do it. And until you find yourself, um, I think that's when you start making all those decisions, financial decisions as well. You know, um, going. I've always shared this even with the media. I've never played for any team that I had to sit on the table with the chairman or whoever to discuss about my salary or how much am I going to earn. I've never. I've always signed contracts without knowing how much am I going to earn because I wanted to play the game because mm. of the opportunity. And I knew that my time is so small because I came into the PSL, I think I was 24, 25, so I wanted to maximize on that. So for me, it was never based on the money. But once the money is there because you never get education for it, you tend to do other things that pleases you forgetting that uh, uh, you've got a short career. But thank God, mm. with all the mistakes that I've done, um, um, I was able to recover from those because I still had a little bit of time to actually come back and play football. And within that decision actually helped me to become the person that I am today. And, and, and you know, I love the fact that yourself and Stiga have spoken about something that we know all too well. A football career is too short. But how do you then, they mitigate the shortness of your career and really wanting to have those three cars. But because when you walk out of NetBank headquarters, uh, we need to be seeing you in a nice car that sounds really nice. But how do you mitigate that as a footballer, young footballer in South Africa, knowing that it's short and the money is coming in? I think like, like Stiga and Deco, I think I've also learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes along the way as well. Even being a family man, you know, you, you end up owning three houses at one time you know, which maybe you could have focused on one only, you know, so those are those are the kind of decisions that, that, that we talk about and, and then also the other thing about and I always mention this, is living the now versus planning for the future because um, living now is important as well, you know, tomorrow is not promised that's the other thing about it, so do you enjoy it, you know, do you travel, whatever you're making, you, you, do you live properly mm. you know, so I would go on holidays with the family and, and those are the type of experiences that uh, that can't be bought again you know so when you do those type of things you know um, i think uh, you feel that you're on the right path mm -hmm. and obviously like i'm saying living the now you want to drive you, we all have dreams and aspirations you know and, 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 when, and the minute you're able to to afford what you really want in life you know you, you tend to go after it you know um, and not thinking 
maybe I should have that when I'm 45 or 50 years old, have a 10-year plan on having such a luxury. And that's the lessons I've learned along the way. And uh, like Teco, I started with Coach Pizza from a very, very young age. So I was taught good values about investing money from a very, very young age. I was able to go through that. Obviously, everybody makes mistakes along the way, but I don't think I will, I will know now if I didn't go through the, the struggles and the tribulations throughout my career as well, and post-career, the transition. You have to plan, plan mm -hmm. ahead for your transition as well. It's difficult, you know, but um, I think everybody goes through difficult times, and um, there's always time to recover. That's the one thing, you know, there's lots of examples. Yeah. You know, you can recover if you want to recover. You can always recover, but it's all about, again, that, that small decisions you make that makes a big difference in the end. And because, Dane, you work a lot with uh, young upcoming footballers and you see them, um, are they receptive to the financial advice that you do give them? Um, the, 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 the small nuances where you say, uh, perhaps save here, do that. Are they receptive to that? Do you find that that's a... I, I don't think so. I think it's still, there's still a stigma that if a financial advisor comes to you, you want to take your money. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was in that boat at one stage, you know, where... You've never met a financial advisor in your life and all of a sudden you get introduced to someone and only, only, the only thing you, you ever know and the only thing you can think of is this guy wants to take my money, <laughs> you know. So I think in, in that regard, uh, it, it, becomes, it becomes a bit difficult, but I think a book like Teco's book should be in schools then. Mm. You know, why not uh, have a syllabus? Why not have Teco's book? I mean, we, when I was in, in high school, I was reading Maru and those type of things. And unfortunately, I can't relate to that, you know, but there's a book of Teco that's out there. You know, those are the books that should be in schools and we should be then making a subject and writing exams over that book. Yeah. And then that way we then learn. And, and, and you know, Stiga, listening to what Dane is saying, there is no way for us to mitigate unless you've got former footballers chatting to the younger footballers. But what do you think is, is the biggest, biggest problem right now that we have with football and finance that we do find with our players? If, if I were to, to advise them on something, it would be, um, and in any walk of life, anybody, for everybody here, it's don't spend money you don't have, you know? And I think that's the mistake footballers do because you, you sign a professional contract and you assume that you're going to play for 10 plus years. You only have a two to three year contract. So spend that money. Your budget must speak to your current contract, which is a maximum of three years, you know. So if I had that opportunity and I had to start over again with the knowledge that I have now, mm. I would live within the contract and that term. Because if it's a three years and I'm earning X amount, um, my expenses should speak to that, that contract that I currently have. I cannot foresee that. No, I'm going to play in Europe. I'm, I'm in a national team. I will earn the Euros or all the dollars times 20 and, and X and Y. And so um, I think that that's the, the piece of advice that I'll give them. You know, Stig, I've also always wondered, because I do know that you've got a son and he does have an interest in sport as well. What are the financial conversations you're having with him with how he should prepare himself for the future? Yeah, I always tell him to respect money. Um, and at the same time, I, I have to be honest, I. I illuminate the fact that money is a necessity, you know, in all walks of life. It's not the main thing, it's not the only thing, but if you don't have money, a lot can go wrong. Yeah. They say no money, the love goes out the window. <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> Secondly, um, you, you want to enjoy your life, you want to do nice things, so it has to be um, a necessity in your life, whatever you work and strive towards, understand that you need to respect it because it can open up doors for you. Um, so, so that's the message I drive to him. I said, whatever you decide, yes, you're playing football, you have to study. So he's, he's studying and playing football. Mm -hmm. um, and whatever choice of career you're going to make, understand it needs to be lucrative. But then behind that, there's the passion. If there's not the passion, nothing is going to be successful. Mm. I'm getting a lot of advice here. Um, Donna, if you had the opportunity to also have a chat with young footballers, that you always have a chat with, and looking at your life and the current situation, what's the one thing that you think that footballers are making a mistake with with regards to their finances today? It's, I'd say that it's the lack of respect of money. I think in a sense, Yaori, um, you always know that you're guaranteed at the month you're gonna get paid. So therefore you can do whatever you want and then come end of the month, you start again. It's just a cycle that goes on and goes on. 
and um, and like the guys have said, I think uh, the, the lack of education in terms of savings, because um, you find a guy that's wearing a tailored suit come to the club and speak about finances, you get to that defensive mode that Dana said. You're thinking that this is the person that's going to take my money uh, because it's not a familiar face. And uh, as ex footballers we try to have those type of conversations. They are very uncomfortable conversations with the players because uh, nobody wants to tell you how much they earn. But yet again, when you speak about money, they're always trying to hide because they think they think that your time is done. So the, why you want to tell them what to do with their own money? And it becomes a very difficult conversation, but we try nonetheless. Um, the importance of it, like I, I can't emphasize enough on what the guys have said. It's, it's just also the difference is learning how to start early. I, I do that with my kids as well. Okay, it's time to get pissed off because they don't understand. <laughs> but it's, it, you can tell that it's something that you need to teach all the time. You, you teach them how to save money, but you need to give them money for them to be able to start yeah. saving money. You teach them at an early age. And we grew up not having that type of a structure where you need to be taught at an early age. And when, but that's why when it comes to football, when now you're a 21-year-old, you've never had a certain amount in your bank account, all of a sudden you have it. And there's no education behind it. It becomes a problem as to how you, you're able to spend in it. And also you have... Other guys will come and tell you, you can afford to buy a G weapon, not understanding the, how much money you need to pay for it and for how long. You don't know all this type of things. So because of also the system as well, I don't think for players as well, the system is there for to protect the players or to help them as well. So it's up to the individuals of the players to make sure that they, they, they're able to sustain their lifestyle after football. They're mm -hmm. able to leave, they're able because they, they grow up. You get immature, you've got kids, you've got family, so you'll be able to be able to sustain those, that's a difficult part because you're thinking that, like Stiga said, you're thinking you're going to play forever. At some point, I thought I was going to play until I'm 39. And, and I, I'm thinking, like, I, I still have time to recover. Mm -hmm. not, not, not understanding that within that, there's, there's ex, uh, contract do expire. You're getting older teams get rid of you. You're changing clubs, the salary goes down, and all that type of stuff. So you don't, you don't pay attention to those because you always think that you mean to do it until it happens. So my advice to the, youngster, to the young players or the players that are currently playing is, is respect the money, it will respect you back and don't spend, don't spend more than what you have mm. and make sure that whatever that you have, at least 20% of it, try to save it, don't touch it, you know, you need to have multiple savings and by the time, it's in about on rainy days when mm. you know that when it's tough times and you can, you can tap into it, but save the other one that you don't have to look at it, you know that it's going to help you out once you've retired and i think it's 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 going to be an ongoing conversation that we need to emphasize more because it's we've seen how um our footballers how the cycle have affected so many footballers as well to hear more about where we're coming from about football subscribe 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 sports fanatic <laughs>